Before I get started with today's video, I'd like to highlight a couple of new incredible releases that is definitely making the AI space even more revolutionary. We have so many new releases and I truly recommend that you take a look at each one. Starting off with Llama 3.3, 70 billion parameter model being live on Cerebras Inference. Cognition Labs Devon is fully accessible to anyone. There's also this new Gemini 2.0 model, which is just truly insane. Some say it's even better than Sonnet 3.5, as well as OpenAI's O1 model and various benchmarks. And I definitely recommend that you take a look at my previous video, which I just released today. And it highlights many new benchmarks, which test this model in various ways. We also have some new auto dev updates, which is making it one of the best full stack development tools. But on top of all of this, Windsurf also came out with a huge new release, which is their latest new update called Wave 1. A new way for them to say update, as Wave 1 is a bundle of smaller updates to Windsurf. And I gotta say, this is truly becoming one of the best, if not the best AI IDE that's out there. In essence, the highlights of Wave 1 include the ability to specify rules for Cascade to follow via Cascade memories. You also have the ability to automate execution of certain commands without needing manual acceptance each time. You have WSL, dev containers, and pyrite support, image input support, and much more. And we're going to be exploring each of these small updates further in detail. So let's get started. The main theme of Wave 1 is all about making Cascade even more autonomous. And essentially, this is through two key features. You have memories as well as automated terminal commands. Now previously, all commands required user approval, but now Cascade has a tiered system. You have three tiers. You have safe commands, which are automatically going to execute without user intervention. Then you have ambiguous commands, which is where it will execute pip, npm, and many others along that category, which will still require approval, but users can actually opt in or let the AI decide if they are safe to run. And lastly, you have dangerous commands, which are amongst the category of RM commands and many others, which always require approval. But essentially, users are going to be able to customize between all of these different types of lists of commands by whitelisting or blacklisting these commands and giving them a control over Cascade's autonomy. This automated command execution is going to aim to streamline development and deployment by allowing Cascade to handle routine tasks while maintaining user oversight for potentially risky operations. You can see you have an allow list and a deny list, and you also have auto execution. So you can configure all of this within the settings tab within Windsurf. Now, like I mentioned, there's two key features amongst the autonomy of Cascade. And we first mention the execution of commands, but secondly, we have Cascade Memories. This is aimed to provide context and guidance to Cascade, which is going to be focusing on how to perform tasks, not just the desired outcome. Now, unlike typical LLM training that only uses uh, different types of final code state, this new Cascade Memories feature is going to allow developers to guide the AI to process, especially as it becomes more autonomous. Now, in wave one of this update, this is going to be implemented through user defined rules and it's going to act as the first iteration of memories. So, these rules are similar to guidelines and other tools, but it comes in two forms. You have global rules, which is going to apply to Cascade across all workspaces and are basically set within the Cascade UI. But then you have workspace specific local rules, which only apply to the current project and are defined in the Windsurf rules file. Now, this system is going to let developers provide a specific instruction and constraints to Cascade, and it's going to influence its behavior and improve its ability to work effectively within the deployment process. Now, to install this new update, what you can do is click on your profile button, and once you click on this drop down menu, you're going to be able to see it's going to say check for updates. Now, once you click on that, it's going to then go ahead and install the new updates, and what you can do afterwards is just restart Windsurf and you're gonna be able to access all of these new different features. Along with the Wave 1 update, if you have to click on the search tab, and if you are to search for WSL, you can see that this is now an option. This is where they've introduced this beta support for Windows subsystem for Linux. And this is gonna allow developers to use WSL on Windows to integrate their Linux environments with Windsurf. 
Now to use this feature, you must have WSL installed and configured on your system so that you can access WSL's environment within Vinsurf, either by clicking on open a remote window, or you can basically go over to the bottom left corner and you can start using WSL's remote uh, YSL host. But that's essentially how you can get started with that. Along with the WSL integration, you also have dev containers. So if you are to go ahead into the search tab and search up dev containers, you're going to be able to access the remote dev container. And essentially, this is going to be something that you can utilize for Linux and Mac OS only. And currently, it's not available for, for Windows, but it requires Docker to be installed and accessible from WinServe's terminal. But essentially, it's going to allow you to open a folder with a specified dev container. You can also reopen in the container itself and attach a running container and all these commands are going to be accessible within the output uh, section within WinSurf. Now to set the global rules to do this, you can go over to WinSurf settings and then you can see that underneath cascade, you can set global AI rules. So you can go ahead and click edit rules. And now what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to set all the rules where you can say generate code only in a particular language or you can have it so that it only uh, is restricted to generating in a certain desired path now to configure the allow list of different commands go over to settings and what you can do is go over to windsurf and go over to windsurf editor section and this is where you can add cascade command allow list and a deny list so you can go ahead and add a couple of different types of things that you can have it autonomously execute so if you want it to execute pip commands without you intervening you can then go ahead and click ok so then it will go ahead and execute that command for you without asking you if it should run that command in the same manner you can have it deny certain commands so you can go ahead and click on denying npm commands if you would like but that's essentially how you can configure these command lists to make it more autonomous so this is a 2048 game that i had basically developed and i'm going to go ahead and have cascade run it so i'm going to go ahead and say run this app for me and then we can simply go ahead and click enter and there we go it's going to start this up so now we can then go over to our local host and we can take a look at what it was capable of starting and this is the functional app that it was capable of creating and you can see how it launches things autonomously and you're going to be able to then start accessing your apps quite easily with the help of Cascade's autonomy. But essentially, this update is really unique and with the help of memories, it's going to allow for a system that will implement uh, based off of the rules that you define and it's going to allow you to control Cascade's behavior and it's going to ensure that it works efficiently within your developer's workflow. So this is definitely making Cascade even more useful within Windsurf and it's going to allow you to autonomously perform tasks, code, and execute with your guidance. And I truly recommend that you take a look at this update with all the links in the description below. It's a great update and I definitely love how they're progressing with uh, like smaller updates on a regular basis. I'm definitely going to keep on posting videos on this so that you can stay up to date with whatever they're focusing on. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll leave these links in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon so that you can access our private Discord. Follow me on Twitter so that you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and take a look at our previous videos because there is a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from. But with that thought, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.